I'm Jerry Clark. This is Storytime with Legendary Jerry. My brother, New Face, Q Parker, 104 from 112. You hear this discussion. This is some real, real legendary history with this brother right here, man. Yeah. Real and legendary he, and he history. Just brought up, man, he just brought up Biggie Smalls and, and, you know, one of my favorite songs right here. I want to know about this. This song right here on this cassette right here, one of my favorites, uh, Sky's love, the Limit. I love that man. shit. How yeah. did this well, come Q, about? I love how, that you shit, know, man. And this was probably after his passing, mm -hmm. I'm assuming. Yeah. How did that come about? One thing I, I love about Big, man, he he showed 112 so much love, man. Like, yeah. he always was naming us and shouting us out. He was. He's a, he's <laughs> hey, a reason why. He did a couple He's songs. a reason why we named the second album Room 112, because he, like, coined Room that. 112, where the players Yeah. Well. Um, but I remember when... Uh, when we first signed, Puff would just be on our necks, like, you know, in Puff's own way. And, uh, you know, Big would often, man, just come to our rescue. Like, man, leave them boys alone, man. Mm -hmm. you, like, you signed them because they dope. Let them be dope. And he would, he, would get, he would get Puff off of us a lot of times. And so it allowed us to just have a love for, for him. Um, just some quick stories about Big. Um, you know, as a starving artist, you know, we didn't really have much recording that first album. And so anytime we come in the studio and he would be there, he'd, you know, shoot us a hundred dollar bill just nah. to make sure, you know, did y'all mm. eat today? Y'all good? He made sure that we had Brooklyn Mint gear. Mm -hmm. You know, we from the South, so we don't really know what a goose down mm -hmm. supposed to look and feel like. You know, he made sure we went down to the village, man, gave us bread to, you know, get. in in 96 was the New York blizzard. So we coming from the South. And we having to well, live. Well, niggas, a nigga can't handle that shit. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> from, from the A to that sh man, to a shit. blizzard. You so he was like, nah, man, y'all need the y'all need the adequate coats and stuff. Like, he would just make sure, did y'all eat today, man? See, order, that's some order. real shit right there. Like, man, man um, all, but let me Rest tell you a funny piece, story, right? So Wallace, he did, he did um, the, the, the verse on Only You, us being Southern gentlemen that we are. Uh, our manager, Kay, was like, Kevin Wells was like, hey, yo. Now, we're still in the studio recording the rest of the album, but the single is out. Yeah. And so Kevin comes in and says, hey, y'all, Big is in the, um, in the, uh, I'm having a loss of work. What you call it in the studio, man? The common area? Like the, the lounge or the, the green lounge. lounge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's like, yo, Big is in the lounge. Go in and say, thank you. Yeah. And so I may have been in the booth. Slim may have been doing, but maybe one guy went out first and said, Big, thank you. Yeah. He came back in. Then another member went out. Big, thank you. By the time he got to the third dude, Big was like, hey, yo, 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 hold on, hold on. Can all the members of 112 just come out here like- <laughs> say thank you. Yeah, y'all not going like, keep one time yeah. of me like this. <laughs> keep one piece of me. <laughs> yeah, hey, man. man. But um, to, to answer your question about that, so um, it was it was the, the, the brilliance and the masterminding of Puffy, honestly, man. Um, they had the song and- um, he was like, yo, I just need y'all to uh get on the hook. Mm -hmm. And um it was it was really just that quick. We were already doing a session probably of our own. And uh he bring the track over, bring the music over, and we laid it down, man. Like So really you guys good. had heard the verses. Mm -hmm. The verses yep. were laid already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Wow. Yep. Now with all the all the stuff with your uh former label head mm -hmm. that's been in the media, uh meaning Puff or mm -hmm. Diddy or whatever you want to call him. Um, how you feel about a lot of the shit that you've been hearing? You know, I honestly, man, would hope that what's alleged is not true. I, I, I honestly hope that it's not. However, I'm one of those guys. Uh, I preach this to my son, to those that I mentor. When you are at fault, you just got to say, yo, that's on me. Yeah. You got that and accept the full responsibility of your actions. And, um, you know, if that is the case, what's being alleged is absolutely true. Then, you know, he's going to have to kind of deal with that. Um, you got to pay literally and figuratively. Absolutely. 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 I mean, nobody deserves any kind of treatment of, of the sort. Um, and, you know, me having um, my mom is still living. I have. Um, two sisters I have a daughter uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't want that on he ain't never mush you in the face not did he nah <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> but, but no you know he, he wouldn't have man because 
Puff and I was always like, yeah, like that was my guy. Like he's he would always say, man, like we got to we got to stay down the dark skin and shit. Like yeah, you know I'm the darkest one in the group, and so he would always be like, yo. You my guy, so sometimes <laughs> y'all niggas kind of favorite. Sometimes a bit, the guys man. would be like, "Well, Q, you know that's you his favorite man." So yeah. you go down there and talk to him, or you go in the studio and 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 plead why we should have this song on the record, and you know all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah. Well, y'all coming up through bad boy. I know y'all have heard over the years. I want. I'm not definitely. I'm not saying it's a bad boy curse. That I'm not saying it, but you know, people that said, "Man, you look at the stuff surrounding bad boy." Craig Mack, mm-hmm. G. Depp, Loon had to go sit down in prison. Uh, Shine had to go sit down in prison. You know, it, it ain't affected 112, which is good. Right. Meaning, you know, with some of the stuff, I mean, of course, you all have y'all situation that, you know, mm-hmm. that's going to be resolved. But when when you hear that, like like it's a dark cloud over that shit, what 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 goes through your mind, man? When you're like, okay, like they didn't, you know, they didn't talk about the past and, the, you know, it's, it's been a lot. Black Rob, and, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. associated with, with that bad boy name. I believe that um, in life, you know, we have to make choices. Life is and choices and decisions. It is, man. Uh, a mentor of mine said, you look like your your parents when you're born, but when you die, you look like your choices. Mm. Um, mm. And um, I would just like, we've always, as a unit, we moved differently. Yeah. We would never, we never were into like the the limelight, the hoopla, any of that. Our mindset was let's show up, do our job, get our money, and go home. And I believe because we had praying grandmothers back mm-hmm. in Atlanta, always covering us with the prayer y'all warriors. Were the only down south. Who? Are, what other down south artists that Bad Boy had? There wasn't. So you think about New Face. You got you got a group that's mm-hmm. from the south. That's from the A. Yeah. It's just they they, they built different. I'm not trying to diss, but you from the A, yeah. man. Yeah. You come coming from Atlanta, growing up here, you just built different. It's built different, man. Um. And I, I believe because of the way that we were chaperoned, again, mm-hmm. shout out to Courtney and K Wells and everybody that Big Mike over the years, LA, um, even Greg Browning. Um, you know, we were yeah, always G, shout out to G Brown. Yeah, we were always um we were always covered in a way and shielded and protected from a lot of the stuff. And by the prayers of your grandma. And the and man, moms, we had a praying, praying grandma. Family. And I'm talking about we was around with Hint, Jimmy Henchman, Jack, like, like oh, them, they, was, yeah. they used to come pick us up from high school. Who, Haitian Jack and yeah. Jimmy and all them? Yeah. And like, you yeah. were aware of their, you know, their not, backgrounds? Not at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, was, <laughs> but but I'm sure a uh, short that was, time later. That was big bro. Yeah. yeah. And y'all, you, y'all was around some real thorough ass folks, yeah. man. Yeah, man. And and everybody knew we were different. So mm-hmm. they they protected us and they, mm. they, they, they handled us in a way where, nah, we're not going to let y'all get into that right there. Mm-hmm. Again, our biggest thing was some girls, but we never really like did drugs, alcohol. Like to this day, like I I, I never drank, I don't smoke, I don't do none of that. Like just mm-hmm. was never our thing. And, and they, go ahead. And first. they always attribute, you know, bad boy, diddy, diddy, diddy. But were there people at the bad boy staff that were actually, you know, that you still have friends or relationships currently? And can you, you know, shout yeah. them out or name them? Like who were some of those people? Absolutely, man. Uh, Kirk Burroughs. Oh. When Niles, I remember Kirk um, Burroughs, man, Cheryl Flowers, Michelle Joyce, um, Jessica Rivera, Har Pierre, Har Pierre, um, Super Mario, man, everybody, and I'm I'm forgetting a lot of people. Yeah, I forgot who, who was on the street the street team. Um, that was Super Mario. Yeah, Super Mar- yeah. Uh, No, 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 big dude. Damn, I forgot the nigga name. I can't remember, man. But again, Damn, I forgot. It's gonna again, come to everybody they knew we were from the south, so they just handled us differently, yeah. man. Like we were like the babies of 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 the of the family. Yeah. And, and and you talk about people always say the bad boy family. It was really that, and everybody dealt with us like the little brothers. The little brothers of, of the. Of Who was the y'all label. closest to on the label? Faith. Okay. Man, Faith when. I, I can't mean, wait to when, get her when, on the show, New Face. When she was um, when she and Big was going through their spats, man, she would come and stay at our apartment with us. Yeah, cook dinner for us, man. Like we'd go to the grocery store with her, uh, and talk about can throw down in the kitchen, bro. Faith can cook. Oh my God, man! Many yeah, a Faith, nights that, when Faith come here for the show, I'm I'm gonna need some. Bring some, Faith. Many a nights, man. Hey. Faith kept. 
food in her mouth, man. And, and she just always been like the every time I've been around her, man, her energy was so good, man. Oh man, and Shoot. and even outside of just our relationship with her as a group and her, she and I are just man. That's that's my girl, man. Like my daughter used to babysit her kids when China was little. Yeah, like we just. So when all that shit with Lil' Kim, in fact, did y'all had to choose sides per se, being in a circle all the time, moving around? Nah, it wasn't no sides. Yeah. Nah, it was never no sides. Yeah. And and to be honest with you, man, we didn't really have a close relationship with Kim mm -hmm. um, because although she was a part of the family, she wasn't like directly. Yeah, technically. Yeah, that, that was bad. That was boy. Big. She was like yeah. a cousin, if you're looking at it from a family standpoint. Extended family. She was like a cousin and like, Junior Mafia, they were family, but, but it wasn't like a cousin. Immediate, yeah, yeah, it wasn't immediate, yeah. You so see that, them doing a family reunion or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, gonna see like them in the family reunion, so, yeah. Uh, and you being associated, you know, with Bad Boy and you guys were an R&B group, let me ask you, the first time you heard Hit Em Up by Tupac, do you remember it? And man, what was your reaction when I you heard it? I hated it, bro. I hated it, man. And DJs would try to be slick sometimes. Like, it. they would play it when they knew we were in. That's that whole shit. Man. That's whole and shit. And so, Bear would be like, you know, Bear yeah. get on his gangster. And, and, <laughs> shout out to Bear Loke, man, my dog. Shout out to Loke, man. He he would go and uh, him the DJ up and tell the DJ <laughs> like, yeah, not man, to stop. like, nah, don't don't play that. Don't do like, that. Nah, wow. um, that's some lame ass, petty ass shit. Though. It was, man. It was. Hey. It was. <laughs> hey, boy. Before we get out of here, Q, <clears throat> remove everybody in one twelve. Mm -hmm. Put together a five person. <laughs> That was in my list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> New face. You already know where I'm going. Put together your five person super group. Wow. Yeah. Can't be your brothers from 112. Because that's the first super group. Of course. How far can I go back? You go back. Okay. Shit. Babyface oh, is a shit. member. I wasn't expecting to hear that. Face. Chris Brown is a member. Wow, you to a okay. Usher is definitely oh, a member. Definitely, I thought you was gonna say him first. Okay, R and B, right? Yeah, R and B, Face, Usher, Breezy, um, Stevie. Okay, Stevie Wonder, and Marvin Gaye. Ooh. Oh yeah, okay, hey man, okay. Oh, I like that one. Damn, that's a, that's that's range. That that's a oh and me. Mm. No, nah, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's sick. You the sixth yeah. member. Oh no, I'm, I'm in the starting five. Oh, oh well, who you? You gotta somebody, put somebody on somebody the bench. Somebody else team. coming off the bench. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, no, nah, this is my team, damn it. Just I'm tell starting. Stevie he on he on stage, but just hey, him man. Yeah. Hey bad boy, I want to say, hey man, I appreciate you. Nah, kid, man. man, it ain't time to go yet. Hey man, shit, man. What you are we we now we got we can talk, man. Shit. Because we talking about vocalists. I want to talk about, you know, we had a past guest, Divine Stevens, talk about uh, contributing yeah, to you guys' legacy. Yeah, he talked about it. He sure uh, did. Absolutely. Can you yeah. talk Man. about how important he was to that legacy Man. and what he did for you guys? Let me tell you something, dude. To be a male R&B singer, you got to just have that R&B shit. Yeah. You got to. And It's like an it factor. You it just is, gotta have, man. man. It ain't, it and ain't. I'm going to tell you, man, the reason why I can walk the way that I walk, covered, oozing in that R&B shit. I ooze that R&B shit. But the reason why I can do that is because of K. Wells, Some Puff, and Divine Stevens. Yeah. Because, man, the countless hours that we spent- From my artist Corey, development. Oh, my, from my artist development, I gotta add Marvelous McIntyre in there oh, too. Yeah. Uncle Marvin just is saw in there. Marvin the other day. Uh, we got anybody that put time into developing my group. I'm gonna I'm extract myself out of that man because I was paying very close attention to just the way that it has to look, the way that it has to sound, and so that's why to this day, man, I'm I'm very aware of what my presentation looked like. I'm aware of what my body. Yeah. Gotta look like I'm aware of what I do from a daily nutritional regimen because mm -hmm. I, I take pride in still sounding today better than I did back then back 20 then. years ago. Like, yeah. I, I love when people say, Well, damn, Q, you look the same or you look still younger than compliment. you are. Like I'm 47 years old. Like all of that goes into me paying attention to the lessons that Divine was imparting. Mm -hmm. During our time with him, K. Wells, 
Courtney and, and all of those guys, man. And so uh, you just don't wake up just because you can sing and be able to embody that real R&B oh, shit. Oh, yeah, not at all. You don't. This it, it, it has to be developed. It has to be nurtured so that you can then become, you you live it and it becomes yeah. second nature. And when Divine was on the show, New Face, remember he said when he first started working with y'all, y'all had one member that had uh, Challenges. a couple, couple left feet. <laughs> so Devine said he had to put in a little extra work uh-huh. to really. He said uh, he said he was told beforehand like yeah. there's one member of the group that that you know don't really have, have that. he had to meet them where they was at. Yeah, well, watch this though. But I'm gonna tell you what some determination and some dedication to do, and I'm gonna say it. That member was Deron Jones. Yep, that's what he but said. I'm gonna tell you this though. Deron became the best dancer. Mm. Damn. He. He put in the work and he became the best dancer. Wow. Ain't that some shit? Yes, sir. From two left feet to being the best of the four. <laughs> what you what you say when you put in put in the work and man. A little dedication. Yeah. yeah. What what that create is. a regimen. Be consistent in that regimen. Only results can come out of that. That's it, man. And man, and me and my brother Jerry talk a lot, and it don't be music. We be about be about family and our children and everything. Mm-hmm. And one of the best things I seen on the internet, man. You know, I'm a grandfather now, um, but welcome, seeing both of y'all, yeah, both of y'all, grandfather, yes, seeing you walk your daughter down the aisle. I yeah. mean, I, I I haven't got there yet, um, but can you describe what that meant for you and how special that was for you as a father and as a black man to yeah. to see that? That's the ultimate. That's that's one of the the ultimate highlights of my life and I, I would I would say that for any man that can um walk his daughter down the aisle um mm-hmm. and trusting that the fella that is going to be her husband and your now son in law is going to do all the things that you would do or, or uh, protect for your and baby provide. Girl. Um but I will say man uh she's always been my baby girl and I don't care how old she get that's Thanks. my BG all day. But I even fall in love with her even more because uh, she gave me my very first grandson. Mm. And I'm going to tell you, man, Leo is like, man, he. Well, you can see the smile on your oh face. Y'all look, look at his smile. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a proud granddad. That's my bro. baby right there, man. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud that she's now uh, expecting twins. And so wow. we're going, I'm oh, going so you're from, about to have from one to three. One to three. <laughs> yes, sir. But it's, it's, it's legacy, man. For that's me. it, man. It's, it's, it's legacy. Um, even with my foundation, man, it's Q Parker Legacy Foundation because mm. the impact that we are having with the senior demographic, uh, the senior citizens demo, and the children, um, our youth, it's it's just about legacy, man. And mm-hmm. I want when 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 I'm no longer here, I want the the work that I've done while I was alive to, to live continue way on. beyond yeah. the breath of my body. And no. I think we all took a great start because, you know, you look, I grew up with our grandfathers. They was already retired in the rocking chair. You know what I'm saying? Look, this brother's get, st- look, yeah, look, mean, come on, look at oh, yeah. y'all granddaddies. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Y'all don't fly ass niggas. Yeah. Like you said, we don't yeah, look yeah, like yeah. what we've been through. Hey, man. Nah, <laughs> or our we, choices, as we you We redefining said. what, what, what. It, so it's funny, right? When uh, my daughter was pregnant, everybody was like, well, what you going, what's your, what's your grandbaby going to call you? G-pa, grandpa. I was like, nah, we ain't doing that. So my grandson, he, I'm GP. Wow. See. You know, we had to make it cool. Yeah, we had to make it cool. Do that one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pop. Now you GP. What he, you call new face? Like, what your grandbaby like, call you? Papa. Papa. Yeah. Yeah, I, I ain't ready for Papa yet. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's how old that I'm. I'm still moving a little bit. Like. <laughs> that's how old that I'm. Oh, buddy. oh Papa, Papa ass do it. New face Papa. <laughs> Old ass. Yeah. I had to make uh-huh. mine look cool. GP. No, I guess I, I don't know. My oldest 26. I, I, all my kids in their 20. Man, I don't I got time to think about it. You got yeah, time. You got time. You got time. I just, yeah, yeah. Man, I, but uh, so without with, with 112 not going out right now, mm-hmm. I've been able to witness what you're currently doing with yes. the Q Park and Friends. Mm-hmm. Tell me how, tell us how you came yeah. about with that. Cause that's a Future. dope ass, yeah. yo, new face. This is dope. You got to see it. You got to see the show. I learned a long time ago, man, just listening to, again, Courtney, Kevin, everybody, man, the power of relationships. That's what it's and, all um, about. I am, I'm so proud that over the years of almost 30 years, I have some great relationships with mm-hmm. peers of mine. And um, it's to the point where it's phone, phone, great relationships, good status. So that when you, when you call, they'll pick up the phone. And so some years ago, 
City, I did a show at City Winery and I, I wanted to make a tribute to the 90s number ones. And um, I just got on the phone and just called my friends and they showed up. Whatever mm -hmm. you need, Q, whatever you need. And I always try to position myself so that when they call for me, I'm available. Yeah, and you, I, I, man, I'll, reciprocate. I'll jump through hoops, man, for my friends. If they call me, it ain't it ain't a question of whether I'm mm -hmm. going to do it or not. We just need to work it out. But um, the Q Parker and Friends experience is just that. I call my friends and we just give you you know, an hour and 20 minutes of just back to back. And I, and I have some amazing friends, man, with some, New with some face. extensive hits, catalog. Man. Yeah. It's on hits. I'm, an I'm hour. He said more than an hour too. Hey, man, man. I mean, I, just, I was, when I was watching the show Q, I was like, damn, you got RL coming out doing the next stuff. You yeah. got Mingo coming out doing the jagged stuff. You got Dondria coming out. You got, mm -hmm. um, Lil G from Silk doing Jace, so, Soul for Real. Jace from Soul for Real, man. This Mila shit, 702. It just mm. was it was just yeah. hit record after hit record, yeah. man. Man. So so you know, we we do that, we do that probably two or three times a year. We, we almost kind of like relegated it to just kind of the private yeah. private events because I, I never want to infringe upon my friends being able to make money make, on their, make their money with real that. bag. Yeah. It's Friday, Saturdays. And so we'll normally do it like a midweek. When the corporations are doing their end of it's the a, year, it's a dope so, ass show. It's, it's a great experience, dude, and, and I and I love it because oh, I get to not only witness my friends being dope, and we've been on the road with each other for years because yeah. a lot of times all of our groups are on the same shows, but to be able to see them in this light even present day, and I get to be on stage with them, yeah. singing the songs with them. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm fans of theirs first. First, yeah. Not then friends. Never mind. Yeah. New face, you gotta see the show, bro. And, and, and he's talking about relationships, and I just have to say this. I know Jerry Clark always dedicates this show to someone special that we all know and love. Uh, but the reason I'm here in Atlanta is because of my brother Damon Thomas. Mm -hmm. He was yeah. a photographer. Um, and he told me, you know, come to CA. Well, he didn't tell me to come. He said, come to Atlanta, and I got you. Uh, you know, I'll show you around. He was already at CAU doing mass media communications. And I did, I decided to do that. My mother trusted him, like he got me. So I moved down here. First video I'm sitting on is Laffy Taffy. He's directing, um, wow. directing music videos. He did Shoulder Lean with Young Drill, 24s for TI. Um, and then he decided to go on photography. Um, and, and he would just text me photos like this um, with this brother. Wow. He would shoot, uh, he got, Q right here. Whoa. And we damn. would talk about, you show, know. Show that to the camera, new fan. We would talk early photos that uh, Damon Thomas shot, and he would call me and just talk about, and this is members of the group that he yeah. shot. Yeah. And, and just the excitement. Wow. When he would call me, because, you know, this is my brother, and he got me here, but I could, we always knew when we were excited that we got a win, and when he was able to say, you know, I was shooting with Q, and, and just, him telling me these stories. Um, so I definitely want to dedicate this episode to him as well, but just to say how much your relationship with him meant to us, yeah. you know, yeah. and everything. So I want to thank you for that and just Absolutely. allow him because that, and every time I see you in the city, man, it's always been love. And I, hey, and I say that. And this is solid. He's just a solid ass And dude, I love man. that because, you know, best. people always highlight the, the bad thing or this industry, this industry, me and Jay be outside for real. And it's an honor to meet people who are just solid every time, show you love. Every time. Every time. Don't, and never switched up because we never had any business, but it's just love. I don't need anything from this brother. It's always happy to see him. He showed me love never. So I just want to say personally, thank you for being a That's part love, of this show man. and I being who you are as well, brother. Even you know, though man, he came in here with that jacket stunned there and I'm supposed I to have mine, but it's cool. I got one for you. Okay. You know, man. Did they make CAU? My mom. My oh, oh, see that. <laughs> Yeah, you. <laughs> hey, man, finish what you were saying. <laughs> we no, gonna I leave did that two alone. years at Clark, so 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 I'm gonna I, I rock. Yeah, I rock it's hard. still HBCU. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just man, I believe that um, the industry sometimes has a way of making individuals lose themselves. Mm -hmm. And my mother instill some core values my parents instill some core values in me that no matter where i go what i what level of success i achieve i'm still quintus parker mm -hmm. and never lose sight of that and i see so often uh, the music industry the entertainment industry has a way of giving you so much access and putting so much 
uh, success and you are able to attain so much so quickly at times that you can easily forget who you really are are and start Mm -hmm. treating people differently and, you know, Mm -hmm. just being an asshole, man. And, you know, I I just like I say all the time that it costs nothing to be kind. Nothing at all. It takes it costs nothing. We in man, we we around some kindness. Oh, um, it's like the worst. (laughs) <laughs> they were the, the worst. Bro. Oh, three dollar bill, last phony ass niggas. Man, this music industry is a motherfucker. Ooh, so man, I, I just, I just, is, all, I, I just try my best to to fight against what is in some cases commonplace. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I love to hear when people say, "Q man, you you a stand up guy," um, because I know that prior to meeting me, they probably came in contact with. Eight people oh, who yeah. weren't kind. Some terrible uh, folk. You know, like they say, terrible, terrible, yeah. terrible. So yeah, I I live by that, dude. It costs nothing to be kind. And so before any of the records, before any of the money and the fame, deal with people the way that you'd want to be dealt Amen with. Amen to that, man. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Jerry Clark, New Face, Q Park. I got one last question. Sure. Get out of here. Out of all the producers that y'all work with over the years, that you work with over the years, Tim who is Bob. that? Who is that one? You you gonna you ain't even gonna let me finish. You already know that one. You just truly enjoy working with Tim and Bob, man. Yeah, Tim Kelly and Bob Robinson. Obviously, I'm a Puffy is in there too because yeah. he he helped create Story Time. Bam. Damn. So Story when Time we, when, with Legendary Jerry. When we were signed to Bad Boy. All we wanted to do was sing ballads. That's it. We just wanted no up tempo. Get some girls around us. Sit on the piano and just croon their ass to sleep. That's it. However, meeting Puffy, he he brought he introduced us to the hip hop. And so when you talk about the way the world coins hip hop and R and B, you got to put one twelve in that category oh, too because we were pioneers yeah. of no most definitely blending hip hop most with definitely R and B melodies. And so we mastered the R and B in us because of producers like Timmy Bob. Our sound was even more crafted being with Tim and Bob. Once we got with Puffy and brought the hip hop element to our melodies and our harmonies and all of that, it became what is known as hip hop and R and B. But man, a lot of what I learned Puff a beast with that doing it. He started with the Mary J shit and all that. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of so Tim and Bob is who you early man. Yes, our first time in a in a in a in a professional studio was at Dark Studios with Tim and Bob. And they had the patience to see how gifted and talented we were. But if we just give them a little love and just give them a little more time and just spend some time with a man and show them the ropes and show them this, they're going to eventually be incredible. And this is them coming off the just working with Tim, with um, Boys to Men and Babyface and all of those groups. And they were just kind of giving us everything that they had got from those guys. And so, yeah, by far, by far, hands down. New face. He said, Tim close. Kelly know, and right? Bob Robinson. It's not far. even close. And we've worked with a lot of producers, but Tim Kelly, not Bob Chuck, Robinson. Not, but the, the, no. Have you ever worked with Jermaine Dupree? Which was yes, we did. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we yeah. did on on album four. I want to say. Thought, I thought it was album three. Album four. It was okay. Pleasure and Pain album. Um, yeah, we did two songs with uh, Jermaine, and, and I mean that was that was also uh an unforgettable moment because, you know, people like to say, well, you know, he's the jagged edge guy. Yeah. So how he's yeah. working with 112 or how did Puff do, uh, yeah, the nasty yeah. girl? he did it with jagged, jagged edge. edge. So, yeah. but it doesn't mean that we still can't do music. Exactly. So it, it, I love, I, Jermaine is one of the greatest producers of our era and our time. Producers, so, songwriters, Jay Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So to have that time with him, um, to say that I, I've experienced that was Memorable, hey, man. to say the least. Yeah, Q Parker, Jerry Clark, aka the legendary Jerry, New Face. We here. Hey Q, man, thank you, man. I man, appreciate I appreciate you, bro. You, man. Yes, As sir. Always, Thanks for your man. platform. Thank hey, you. Hey man, so, give um, absolutely. give everybody your social media handles. Yes, sir. I am Q Parker one one two, and also Q Parker Legacy Foundation. New Face. We are here, man. Hashtag New Face was there, but we learned heard some legendary things, man. You can find me on all platforms at New Face. And of course, I'm Big Jerry Clark on everything. And we're about to sign off story time with legendary Jerry, new face, Q Parker, Jerry Clark. And we out of here. Out of here.